Well, everybody, welcome back to the Trick Boxes Joy episode two. I have a new microphone. Hopefully, it sounds good. Improving here the set for you guys. Uh, slowly over time, we're going to have guests and make this into a full blown podcast just for you. But in the meantime, and I think most of the time, I'm going to do some stream of consciousness kind of monologues, some um, solo episodes, talking today about limiting beliefs and how to eliminate limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are those things that we tell ourselves that are basically just negative. And if you tend to be a negative person, then you can understand what I'm talking about. Another way that I've looked at it is not having faith. And that's maybe the thing that I know about myself is my faith is very small. And even though God says that all you need is faith like a mustard seed, I feel like it's even worse than that. And so I've been learning a lot about removing a limiting belief. So a, a limiting belief is obviously two words, limiting. So it's something that shrinks, that lowers, that makes smaller. And a belief is something that you are taking in, that you tell yourself all the time, that you believe it's the truth, no matter what you hear or what God says, etc., or what people tell you. And so my limiting belief has been a lot about a ton of things. And one of them has been recently about cars and maintenance of cars. And my example hopefully will help some of you out there with whatever your limiting belief is in an area of relationship, that you're never going to find that man of your dreams, that job of your dreams, or you're never going to have the body of your dreams. And you really believe it. And you then have beliefs that are shrinking you, that are making you act smaller than you truly are. You're not living in your in your anointing, in, in your power, in who you really are meant to be in this world. And so my limiting belief has been that if anything goes wrong with our cars, that it's going to be expensive, that, oh, no, woe is me. I don't know how to fix cars. It's going to cost an arm and a leg. And those things are true. But here's what's amazing. So we have five of us here in our home and five cars. And every time that we have, oh, and this week, one of our cars, our son's car hasn't passed a smog check. And this is a super old car, like 30 years old. <laughs> it's no surprise, right? That it hasn't been passing the smog test. But my limiting belief says, oh no, I can't afford a new car. What are we gonna do? This is terrible. Uh, who's going to help us now and I can't afford this and woe is me oh no the sky is falling and and that's because I've done everything to try to fix that car over the last 20 years that we've had it including this current problem I've taken it to this guy and that guy they did this they did that this is the third smog test zero it's not passing and the limiting belief in me, the faithless me, wants to not only worry, but wants to in some ways keep beating a dead horse. Instead of saying, wait a minute, just move on, right? Being like a normal human being, instead of being a normal human being, which would act, who would act in faith or just in simple logic, I tend to act in fear. Maybe you can understand what I'm talking about. And so, as I said, those fears shrink life. It's almost as if there are no other options out there, which is just silly, right? Now, how do I get from my limiting belief to the truth, to reality, to hope and faith and power? Well, one of the things that I've been doing is being aware of my beliefs and realizing that I need uh, realizing that I need to change those beliefs because they're very damaging. They cause a lot of stress. They cause worry. They make our family feel small, like, oh, no, we can't, we're, we can't get out of this mess. Whereas God is saying, what mess? There's a million cars out there, and I can give you any of them like that. Well, is that true? Yes. I was listening to a friend 
that she was saying that the way that her positive belief is works like this, that when she's going to the store, Target or Ralph's or wherever, and the parking lot is full, that she's always going to get a parking spot right in front of the in front of the store. <laughs> That's not something that I need or pray about or wrestle with but for her it's a big deal and guess what she was saying how the other day she was driving around and got there no parking and she said okay lord i know how you work and i know how you normally do this so i know that you're going to provide a spot like you normally do right in front of the store and so she went around one more time and boom truth be told or or uh, as expected Someone pulled out right in front and boom, she parked her car. And she says, it always happens to me because that's how God works in her life. So that example, as silly as it may seem, it got me thinking about cars. I thought, has God ever provided for me in the area of cars? <laughs> has, ever, has God ever been a miracle worker in, in the area of cars? <laughs> and of course. And so... My car, before I have the car that I have, and it's an old car. Again, we have a bunch of old cars, but I love my car. Before the car that I have, which is a nice little sports car, it's a Lexus, and I love it. It's stick, it's got nice wheels, it, all these little perks that I never really even wanted, but I love. Now I do. Before this car, I had a Jetta that was just, I call it the cockroach. It was so bad. I, I don't even know how that thing worked for as long as it did. We brought it from Colorado all the way here. Shout out to the car. But I wasn't worried at the time. But out of nowhere, this family that really loves us and we love them, they wanted to bless us and sell us for a very low price this other car, not the one I have. And it was kind of like a minivan, and we had small kids back then, and I thought, eh, I don't know, they're not that small. And Plus, I don't like minivans, it's for me, right? And so we said, you know, thank you, I know you want to give us a great deal, and all this stuff, and you want to bless us, and we love it, but no thank you. And at the time, we were thinking of a family car, even though it was the one I would drive. Well, a week later, this beautiful family said well i do have my son's car that he left here years ago that he no longer uses and he want, wants us to sell it and it was covered inside their garage in irvine It'd been there for maybe five years the whole time it was immaculate just spotless the paint stick this lexus is 300 is that what it is i'm not a car guy I drove it. It had this roar. It was lowered. It had, like I said, all these speed racer things. I never even dreamed of that. But God had that in mind. For a very low price, and in a matter of days, I had that car here in my garage, here in our house. And I've had it since, and I love the car. I take care of it. I wash it, all that stuff. People like to drive up next to me because of stick. And tell me, hey, you want to sell that car? I'm like, no. I taught our son, our, our whole family, my, my, our son and girls, how to drive stick in that car. It's been a blessing. And I will even give it to my son if he wants. I don't think he wants it. And that's happened with all of our cars. All five of our cars have been miracle faith, faith uh, miracles, faith examples. And now that this latest car isn't working and doesn't want to pass a smog check, my normal little brain, limiting belief, says, oh, no. Instead, guess what I've been doing all day? Because we just took the test today again, and again, smog check, fail. Immediately, my mind went to a positive faith belief. I thought, okay, Lord, I wonder where this amazing car is going to come from this time. Just like it happened with me, just like it happened with Rochelle, happened with our girls, it happened, blah, blah, blah. Just like it's happened this way with cars every time. This is just what you do. This is who you are. This is how you've always blessed us with these amazing cars that we love when my little brain couldn't see how. And yet you knew and you brought everything into into its right place and boom there it is we have currently these 
four, five beautiful cars that we love that are our dream cars, you could say. And they came at just the right time. Of course, we had to wait. Of course, there was faith involved. Of course, it was uncomfortable at times to have to fix all these cars, old cars. They're not all brand new Teslas, <laughs> FYI. But they're great cars, including mine. That is not the newest car, but I love it. It runs great. I changed the brakes on it recently, tires, blah, blah, blah. I love it. And so when this smog chick thing happened today now i was tempted to go back to my old ways and to worry and stress and feel my body get all tense and begin to sweat and think very small and oh no and the money and the and and we should just keep trying to make this work and oh no i have to uh, protect or i have to suffer and i have to make this work because i can't trust god for anything bigger than just hoping for the best I'm not saying that's not at times what we have to do and we have with that car, but there comes a time when God says enough, I'm going to provide it. Trust me. I don't know when, I don't know how, meaning I don't know how, of course God does, but I know that he's going to provide a great car. Now, here's the thing. Our son is going to be driving to Santa Barbara and guess what? To go to school and guess what? Do you think I want to see him drive in a car that won't pass a smog check? two, three hours away, or that he won't come because his car is broken down or or doesn't work? You think I want to be driving out there to fix his car in the middle of the freeway at 10 p.m.? Of course not. You think I want my son to instead have an awesome car that he can just drive back and forth whenever he wants to? Of course I do. That is his dream car? Of course I do. But my limiting belief would keep me in this little box hoping for this one thing to get better and to be the way forward because I lack the faith to believe in a big God that has big dreams for my life and for yours and for my son. Instead, all day today, I've been thinking, I wonder what car God's going to provide. I wonder what dream car he's going to give our son that he can drive back and forth, that he can have at school, that he can put his surfboard if he wants to, his drums and all these things that he loves. I wonder what his dream car is, not my dream or maybe my lack of dream. And instead of me shrinking his faith, I'm expanding our son's faith by saying, son, I believe that just like he provided my car and tell him the story I've told him, I told him sorry before, He's going to do the same thing in you because that's who God is. He's going to provide exceedingly abundantly beyond everything you could ever dream or imagine. Imagine, son, what is your dream? Begin to ask God exactly for the car that you want and watch him do it because that's who he is. He's done it with me, with Rochelle, with all of our cars and with more than just cars because it's who he is. How does that feel in my body? It feels amazing. I feel hopeful. I feel expectant. I feel excited. I don't feel any worry. Now, if we fix whatever a hose and the car passes a smog check, great. We keep the car. Maybe that's how God is going to give us more time to find whatever dreams God's dream car is. And if it doesn't pass the test, then great. Now we know that it's time, meaning quicker than sooner than later. It doesn't matter. I'm not stressed over this smog check. Oh, no, I hope it passes. Please, what can I do? Oh, God, please, please. If God's saying nope, then the answer is no. The answer is over here. The answer is over there. The answer is trust me. Watch me. See. Watch me do an amazing miracle. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Watch this is what God is saying to me. And that's the power of faith and of a positive mind that is believing the very best based on who God is, based on experience, based on how I've seen how the Lord has worked before. I have no reason to doubt that he's going to do the same again. Like Habakkuk says, Lord, in mercy or in wrath, remember mercy. Like the song says, do it again, Lord, do it again. Lord, what you did in the past, do it again, God. Just like you did this in the past, you healed my family, you touched my husband, you, you worked in, in my job, you provided this way out. In the same way, Lord, do it again. Based on who you are and based on what I've seen you do. And Lord, help my unbelief. Forgive me for my lack of faith and change your mindset. 
create new neurons or new new um, connections in your brain that go towards faith, that go towards positivity, that go towards hope, that go towards living a life of joy. And that's what God wants for you and for me, for all of us, to live in power, to live in faith because he's done it before. I'll close with this. As you know, when Joshua crossed the Jordan River on their way to Jericho, God said to Joshua to build an altar in the middle of the Jordan River which God had opened. And he said, build to me a, an altar, and I'm going to call it 12 Stones of Remembrance. So if you're at a place where you're just needing faith, I want to encourage you. Change your thinking. Look back at what God has done. Believe his word. Believe what he says about you, that he is for you, not against you. Ask God specifically for what you want and watch him do amazing things. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe, like, comment on the video. I will see you next time. Adios.